Welcome back to Country Car Designs. I'm Jo. My husband Adam and I write sewing patterns for bag makers. So in this video tutorial I am going to walk you through every step of making this little clutch crossbody wristlet bag. There's lots of different things you could call it. And you've got a couple of options for your straps. This is our newest sewing pattern. Um, this is called the Le Monza Clutch. If you want to sew along with us, you can grab the sewing pattern from our website, countrycowdesigns.com, where we also have hardware kits and we also have some makers boxes, which is where we um, create an entire kit with all the fabrics, all the materials that you need to make the bag all in one go. Uh, they do sell out fast, but if you want to join our mailing list, which will be linked in the video description, then you can get notified when they crop up, like when we've got them available. So this cute little pattern is kind of like a wallet. It has um, lots of different stuff going on inside. We've got a slip pocket on the front. We've got tons of room for your phone inside. We've got a zip pocket for your coins. We've got loads of card slots. And then you've got the option of having a wristlet strap or having it as a crossbody like this one. I do recommend using cotton for all of the fabrics for this pattern, purely because there's going to be a little bit of a build up in the seams. Um, you just want to make sure that it doesn't get too like clunky and bulky in there because even if your machine can make it through there, it could end up looking pretty bulky. So that's why we recommend sticking with cotton for this pattern. So here are a couple of others that I made. So this one's out of a lightweight waterproof canvas. And this one, I just wanted to show an example of what it would look like if you didn't do the final top stitch. So. If you use materials that are too thick for your machine and you can't manage the final top stitch, that's okay. Um, your wings aren't gonna tuck in quite as neatly as they do otherwise. But you can see this one still, it still looks lovely. It works just great. You just kind of need to press them in and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, but you can see the difference between the two that the wings tuck in slightly neater there. It's not gonna be the end of the world. So if you aren't really sure about your machine, and you can't do that final step, that's okay. Join us anyway, and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. So let's get started. Step one is preparation. So before you start doing anything, you want to print your cutting chart. There are two cutting charts in the pattern, one's for imperial measurements, one's for metric measurements. Other than that, they're absolutely identical, so you only need to print the one that you're gonna use. On the cutting chart, it will tell you which pieces need interfacing, and which size to cut them. If they are highlighted boxes, you can just cut them as rectangles and save on printing. Follow the details in step one of the pattern for how to interface your fabrics. It's important that you keep them out of the seams uh, when stated. So for many of the pattern pieces, you can see here the interfacing is slightly smaller than the fabric. So we'll set those cutting charts aside. And once your fabrics are all cut out, you have an option for your main panel stabilizers. So in the pattern, it's written to fuse these later on. And that's because we're gonna be fusing through quite a few layers as we attach the overlays to the back. It's gonna get a little bit bulky. However, if you're confident that your machine can handle a bit of bulk, then you can go ahead and fuse those stabilizers to your main panel pieces right now. Alternatively, you can wait until the pattern instructs. But whichever option you choose, make sure that you follow the pattern instructions because this stabilizer should be inset equally from the top and sides, but it's going to have a bigger gap at the bottom. If you're not sure what types of interfacing to use, on page 34 of the pattern is additional information, and that includes alternative brand names for the different types of interfacing. Because for the exterior, we're using a medium woven, and for the lining, we're using a lightweight non-woven. It's very important that you use a lightweight interfacing on your lining because this pattern has card slots and quite a few layers within the lining. So grab your flat pieces. If you're using Decaville 1 or Decaville Heavy, as it's often called, you just want to fuse your flap stabilizer centrally on the lining piece. If you don't have any Decaville 1, you can use two layers of Decaville Light, like I am, and fuse one to the exterior and one to the lining. Make sure that they're completely centered as this stabilizer is gonna help give the shape of the flap. 
So for this video, I'm using this um, floral fabric for the accent pieces like the overlays and the flap. I'm using this solid green fabric for the main exterior. I'm using the stripes for the lining. I'm using the stabilizers that are mentioned in the pattern, which is the Ultra Firm Peltex 71F and Decaville Light for the flap. And I've got some matching green webbing and brass hardware. If you're wondering which part of the bag is which, just check out page four of the pattern where there's a layout photo of the bag and it labels every pattern piece so you can plan your fabrics before you start. Step two is straps. We'll start with the crossbody strap. For this, I've got my webbing, two swivel hooks, a strap slider, and some rivets. If you don't have rivets, you can sew instead. So grab your webbing and put that over the center bar of this strap slider. Now in the pattern, it does give quick instructions for adding a little strap end, but what I'm gonna do instead is simply fold this raw edge under and I'm bringing it back on itself, anything between one and two inches. And now I'm just gonna fit a couple of rivets, one close to the slider and one close to the end here. Now grab the other end of your strap and you wanna put that through a swivel hook. Now, if you have any sort of fraying on your nylon, this can be a good point just to melt it with a lighter. Okay, so you don't wanna keep it there for too long. You just wanna melt it slightly to stop it from fraying. So we put the swivel hook on the end. Then what we're gonna do, making sure the strap is straight, is put it back over that center bar. So it should look like that on one end. And on the other end, we're going to put that through the swivel hook. And again, I'm gonna fold it back to hide the raw edge. Just like that. And I'll set two rivets to hold it in place. And that is your crossbody strap finished. To create the wristlet strap, you just need to follow the instructions in the pattern for marking all of these lines. Then you can fit your stabilizer here. It's going to be an eighth of an inch from these diagonal lines and an eighth of an inch from the center line. Next, you need to get your hook onto here. So you're going to have to fold it a bit. And you want to get the hook somewhere in the center. And really you want the hook to be on the, like the right side of the fabric. Okay, so I know this is messy at the beginning, but don't worry, it's going to get better. So we're going to bring the two ends right sides together, but we want them to be at a 90 degree angle. And you want the diagonal lines to be going in the same direction. So when you match up this corner, the line is running in this direction. It's running in the same direction on the other side. So just clip those two together. Okay, so if your line is this way around, this is the wrong way. We do not want the line to finish here where the join is. Rather, we want it to go that way. So if your line starts in the corner and finishes here, it's wrong. So we're just going to unclip it. There you go. And try switching it around to the other direction. So your diagonal lines are still running in the same direction, but this time the diagonal lines are not running toward the center here. So we're going to take that over to the sewing machine and sew along this line, back stitching well at the beginning and end. Okay, so we're just going to trim that down. So there's just maybe a quarter of a seam, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, what we really should have done is put some double-sided tape along both long edges beforehand, um, which is what I normally do and completely forgot. So I'm going to 
just do this with the pressing of the iron. So first of all, I'm going to press this seam open just here on the iron. Okay, now we need to fold the long edges into the center line. So normally if you've got your double-sided tape applied, you can just peel it off as you go around. So we're going to do one side at a time, and I'm just going to press mine with the iron, pressing it into the center of the line. Once I've done one side, I will do the other. As you're doing this, you'll just have to keep sliding the hook along out of the way. So my biggest tip is to remember to put the double-sided tape on. It will make it a lot easier. So what we're going to do next is fold it on the center line, bring those two edges together and clip them together. Now I'm going to, again, take this to my iron and press it as I do it, because that's going to help hold it in place. And again, I'm going to move the swivel hook as I go so that I can work around it. Now take that over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew each long edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also do an extra seam inside with a quarter inch seam allowance on each side if you want to have the extra stitching. As you go, just move the swivel hook out of the way as you're sewing. So to finish off the wrist strap, I'm going to choose a place for my hook to sit and I'll just clip that together. And I'm going to set a rivet through just below this swivel hook. Another option would be just to sew a line across here using a zipper foot nice and close to the hook to hold it in place. So I'll set that rivet and that's this step done. Let's move on to the next step. Step three is the back exterior panel. For this step, you're going to need a magnetic snap of some kind. So in the video, we'll cover this feature edge magnetic snap. And in the pattern, we also cover how to do a standard magnetic snap. I've got a piece of foam stabilizer just to thicken that out. It's really handy for these types of snaps. And then in my exterior fabric, I have my two overlays. I have my exterior flat piece, my lining flat piece, and my exterior main panel, just one of those. I've then got my overlay stabilizers, two of those, and my main panel stabilizer. So we'll start with the lining flap. Now your stabilizer should already be fused to this. And if you're using a standard magnetic snap, just follow the pattern instructions to mark that and cut the slits now. What I'm gonna do is place this right sides together with my exterior flap piece and clip those together. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew from the top all the way around the stabilizer. And I'm going to use the stabilizer as a guide. So I'm going to change to a zipper foot so that my presser foot can go right up against the stabilizer. This way I'll get a really neat finish. But if like me, you're using two layers of Decaville light, it is important that the Decaville light on both sides matches up. Now that's sewn, I'm just going to use some pinking shears to trim down the curves. So you can just simply kind of cut into the seam a little bit, but pinking shears make this a little bit easier. You don't want to snip your stitches. You're just trimming the seam allowance and making it so that the curve can sit neatly. Okay, so turn your flap right side out. Because we sewed around the stabilizer, it should kind of pop out with the perfect shape straight away. But if you need to, you can just use a turning tool to push your seams out and get a neater finish on the curve. And give that a press with the iron. Now that's pressed, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to top stitch around, but I'm going to leave the top open. For top stitching, I use a slightly longer stitch length. I'm using a size four stitch length, but bear in mind that when you're sewing curves, the longer the stitch length, the harder it is to sew around the curve. 
So if you're using a standard magnetic snap, you would have cut the slits for that earlier and you'll now want to reach inside and fit that snap. I'm using a feature magnetic snap instead. So what I'm going to do, I've got my piece of stabilizer cut. Um, I'm going to slip that inside and I want it to end up down here. So I'm going to slip that in, make sure it's centered and right up against this edge. And then I'm going to fit my magnetic snap over that edge. And it's a nice snug fit now because of having that foam in there. I'm going to measure and make sure it's centered from each side and then screw it in at the back. So for a bit of extra security, you could actually put some glue on before you slide this on. Um, but then when you're fitting the screws, I find the easiest way is to kind of make a little hole using my awl first. And then you can just baste that top edge closed. So set your flap aside for a moment and grab your two exterior overlays. Now you need to fuse the stabilizer centrally like I've done on these. And then what we're going to do is fold these edges over and top stitch them. So you can either press this to hold it in place or you could use some fabric glue or double sided tape. I'm actually just going to clip it in place. So you're going to fold both edges over. Don't worry if there's a tiny bit of overlap or if there's a tiny bit of gap. That is fine. We just need the finished size to be the size of the stabilizer. So I'm going to do that with both. Then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch both long edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so set one of those aside for later. And on the current one, we're going to mark it one inch and one and a half inches in from each end. Make sure that you're using an erasable fabric pen. So grab your exterior main panel and this is the top edge where the curves are. There's two measurements in the pattern. You need to mark them down from the top edge and mark them across the entire panel. Okay, my lines are marked and I've also marked the center on those. Then on my flap, I've marked the center on the exterior side. So to fix this in place, I'm gonna use a little bit of double-sided tape. So you can use fabric glue if you prefer. And I'm going to place my flap right side up. I'm going to match the center marks and I'm going to match it to the top line. And we're going to sew that in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. OK, so next we need to fit this overlay. It's a tiny bit longer than the main panel. That's to give room for the D-rings. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some double sided tape on the back and you want to make sure it's within the two lines that are closest to the center. Now you want to line up the bottom edge of this overlay with the bottom line that you drew. Make sure that it's centered so it's hanging equally off both ends. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew a box to sew this in place. We're going to sew along the top edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down this closest line to the center, across, back up the, the line on the other side and create a nice neat box. When we're doing this, we're fixing this in place and the flap. Make sure you back stitch well on this overlay because it's gonna have the D-rings on it which hold the strap. So I'm now gonna grab the two D-rings and pop those one on each end Now, depending how thick your D-rings are, your overlay may hang off the edge, it may not. But you just wanna make sure that they're snug right up against that stitching that you've sewn. And you wanna fix that in place. And what we're gonna do is sew another box from the edge down the first line here, the one inch line, 
and just create a nice little square here. We're going to do this on both sides. You may find a hump jumper useful for getting around the D-rings. Okay, so if you haven't already, now is the time that you need to fuse this stabilizer on. So you can see why we didn't do it until now in the instructions, because sewing through this layer and this layer of Peltex will be difficult on some machines. But what we're going to do is we're going to fuse it to the main panel. Now, it's very important that it's fused three eighths of an inch in from the top and the sides and the bottom will be bigger. So the easiest way to do this is to mark it first before you fuse it. OK, so I'm going to take that over to the iron and fuse it in place. And I'm just going to avoid the area with my D-rings. So don't worry too much as long as the main part of this is fused in place. Later on, it will be completely fixed in with sewing. OK, once that's fused in place, you're going to fold this bottom edge up like this. And we're just going to top stitch that in place. So I'm sure you're wondering why we've done that. It's all going to make sense later when we close up the bag. And I think you're going to really love the method that we're using. Now this panel is finished, we can just trim these little bits of overlay off so that they match the main panel. And also, if you've got them, you can just fit a rivet on either side of the D-ring just to give it some extra support. And now that the stabilizer is fitted, it will be going through the stabilizer too to just really strengthen this because it's going to have the weight of the bag hanging on these D-rings. Step four is the front exterior panel. For this step, you're going to need the rest of your magnetic snap, your exterior and lining pocket pieces, your other main panel stabilizer and other main panel. But before we start, we're going to do a little bit of maths. So to ensure that you get the correct placement for your magnetic snap, regardless of you know what type of snap you're using, we are going to measure from the edge of the flap to the center of this magnetic snap. So you can see that mine's half an inch. So take that measurement off of three inches. So three inches minus half an inch, two and a half inches. I'm now going to grab my exterior slip pocket, making sure that it's right way up because it's actually wider on one edge than it is on the other. And the measurement I just got, two and a half inches, I'm going to measure it down and I'm going to fit my magnetic snap there. Down from the top edge is where you're measuring. So I've marked my magnetic snap location. Now what I'm going to do is place the washer over that mark and mark the side slits. And we just need to snip those little slits And for cotton, I always like to use a little bit of fray check on these slits. OK, and I've done the same thing with a scrap piece of stabilizer. I really like to put a piece of stabilizer behind my magnetic snaps just to add a bit of strength. So I'm going to push that through the fabric, then through the stabilizer, put my washer on and fold those prongs back. Now I'm going to grab my lining piece. I know I'm using an exterior piece of fabric, but you know, it's a pocket. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to place these right sides together. Now, again, these pattern pieces are kind of trapezoid. They are wider at the top, just very slightly than they are at the bottom. So just make sure that you've matched them the right way around and clip those together. And then I'm just going to sew this top edge with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you're sewing the top edge because Otherwise, your magnetic snap might end up in the wrong place. OK, so we're going to turn those right side out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the seam open. And then I'm going to fold it so that just a tiny bit of the lining is on show. Just just a smidge like that. So it's almost like the pocket has piping and I'm going to press that with the iron. And now I'm going to top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So grab your main exterior panel and we want the curves at the top again. 
We're going to place the pocket on, make sure that you line up those bottom edges and then clip the bottom into place. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to clip the top edges, but we need to make sure that the gap on this side is equal to the gap on this side because the pocket is about an eighth of an inch wider. So when you clip it in place, it's going to puff out at the top and that is correct. So make sure it's lined up on this edge. There we go. And you should have a tiny bit of a puffing out. This stops the main panel from creasing later on. So you just need to measure and check that it's equal on both sides here. Okay, now what we're going to do is unclip that bottom edge. We're going to flip up just the exterior. And we're going to sew this lining piece to the main panel using one inch seam allowance. So some of these steps may seem a little bit strange, but what we're doing is making sure there's as little bulk as possible, particularly in the bottom of the exterior of the bag for later on. OK, so now I'm going to trim these two pieces down. So this is the lining and the main panel. The exterior pocket piece is still out of the way. Now put your exterior pocket piece back down and clip those sides together. And we're going to baste both sides from top to bottom. The reason we're doing that is because we're working with cotton that's not interfaced. So you might get a little bit of stretch here. If you sew one side from top to bottom and one from bottom to top, you can end up with a skew if pocket. OK, so now we're going to flip that over and we're going to fuse the stabilizer just like we did with the other side. And you want to make sure it's 3 8 of an inch in from the top and both sides. When you're fusing this, you can just kind of fuse around the magnetic snap. You don't need to fuse that center bit. What we're going to do now is fold this bottom edge up, same as last time. And then we're going to top stitch this in place. And that's your front panel done. Set that aside and we'll move on to the next step. Step five is the lining zip pocket and wings. For this step, you're going to need your four exterior wings, which should be interfaced according to the pattern piece. Your four lining wings, zip pocket facing, two zip pocket pieces and one main lining panel. So the first thing you're going to do is get your lining panel. It's wider than it is tall, so make sure it's the right way up and you're going to measure and mark five eighths of an inch down from this top edge. As always, make sure you're using a disappearing fabric pen. And I've also marked the center. So this, this line's about four inches wide and I've marked the center too. Now on your zip pocket facing piece, on the wrong side of the fabric, you also need to draw, draw a diagram. So this is all laid out in the pattern instructions so you can see what you need to do there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark the center by just folding this. And I'm going to place it on the line that I've drawn on that main panel. I'm going to make sure that the centers match up and pin that in place. So your fabrics here are right sides together. Now we're going to sew this rectangle. When we get to the corners, you want to reduce your stitch length. I go down to about a one, which is a very short stitch length, just to do these corners. That helps to get a neater finish when we're done. So now we need to snip this center line and also the triangles at the end. You want to get as close as you can to those corners without cutting your stitching. So I usually prefer to use a craft knife for this, but I'm going to try these very sharp scissors instead. Okay, so take that over to the iron and give it a good press like this on all four sides. And then we're going to push it through to the back and press it again from the back. So when it's done, it should look like this on the front and like that on the back. 
If you have some big creases here, it could be because you've not snipped close enough to the stitching. Um, or you might just need to give it a really good press with your iron. So now grab your zip and your two zip pocket pieces. Place one of the pocket pieces right side up. And we're going to place the zip right side up on the top edge. It's closing to the left and we're going to clip that together. And we'll sew that with a scant quarter inch seam allowance, which is slightly less than a quarter inch. Now grab your remaining zip pocket piece and place that right side up with the top edge at the top. If you have a directional print, you're going to grab the other side of the zip and place that right side up on top and clip those together. So your pocket pieces are now right sides together. Make sure that they line up on the sides. We'll sew that with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, just open that up and I'm going to give it a press with the iron to make sure that the zip lays completely flat. If you have a metal zip, just be careful of it getting hot. Um, and if you've not ever used heat on your zippers before, just check because just in case your zip melts. Okay, so now that's completely flat. I need to fit this on top. So to hold this in place, I'm just gonna use a little bit of fabric glue. You could use double-sided tape if you prefer. So with the pocket still open like this, you wanna place this on top. Make sure it's centered. And now we're gonna sew around this box with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so don't worry about this pen mark. It's disappearing ink. It can take up to 10 days to disappear on its own. So flip this over. And what we wanna do is just pull that top pocket down. Mine's got a little bit of glue holding it in place. Okay, okay. And you'll see that the top is shorter than the bottom one. So we're just gonna trim that bottom one to match. And now I'm gonna clip those two pocket pieces together just making sure that they're both laying nice and flat. Now I'm going to take this over to the machine and sew the sides and the bottom. And to do this, you can just pull that main panel away as you sew past it. So as I was sewing that, Adam just came in and just showed me his latest prototype. So that's a pretty cool bag. So um, watch out for that next month. Maybe we'll get him to do the video. So that's our zip pocket finished. If you want two zip pockets in your bag, just do the exact same thing with the other lining panel. So set that aside and grab your wings. So lay your wings out like this. You should have two reversed in each fabric. And what we want to do is place a lining right sides together with each exterior one. So clip those together and we're going to sew them with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on the top, the diagonal and the bottom, but we're not sewing the long straight edges. I tend to sew these with the exterior side up. That's because the exterior has some interfacing on and fabric that's not interfaced is more likely to stretch as you sew it. Once those are sewn, we just need to trim these corners. So what I'm going to do is trim around each corner to reduce the bulk. Don't get too close to your stitching though. And then I'm gonna turn this right side out and use my turning tool to just kind of push those corners out. So just spend a bit of time just making sure that you get a nice neat finish. Otherwise you're gonna end up with this big bulky bit at the bottom which doesn't look great, but also it's going to be a pain to sew later on. Okay, and once you've done each of those, just take them over to the iron and give them a press. Now, I know there's a lot of pressing in this pattern, but it really will make a difference at the end to how neat your project is and how easy it is to top stitch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch these wings, but we're just going to do the top, the straight edge and the bottom edge. We're not top stitching this slanted edge.
Okay, so that is your wings done. Set those aside and we'll move on to the next step. Step six is the lining. For this step, you're gonna have four lining side accents, your two main lining panels, one of which has a zip pocket in it, and two card slot pieces. Most of this step applies to both of the lining panels. Both of the card slot pieces are assembled in the same way, so I'll just so show those once and then you can repeat the whole process. So the first thing that we need to do on our card slots is to mark some measurements. Now in the pattern, it has all the measurements that you need to mark up the card slots. When you're marking your card slots, I don't recommend using a heat um, fading pen because we're gonna be pressing this in place and then quickly all of your lines will disappear. So we're marking all of these measurements on the wrong side of the fabric. So as you're marking each of these lines, make sure that your ruler is lined up with this edge to make sure that your lines are straight. Otherwise you could end up with kind of wonky lines. You also want to mark the top and the bottom just so that you can keep track of where you're folding from. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the top and the bottom half inch lines. And we're gonna fold it wrong side together and give it a press. Okay, now we're gonna fold it wrong sides together on the first line from the bottom. So check that you've got the bottom there and you're gonna fold it wrong sides together on that line and give that a press. Now for the rest of the lines, we're gonna go right sides together, wrong sides together, right sides together, wrong sides together. And as you fold each line, just give it a press with the iron. So we're gonna go right sides together on that one and that should pretty much line up with your first fold. Then we're gonna go wrong sides together. And what you will start to see is your card slots taking shape. So take that over to the iron and press all of the lines like that. Okay, so this is what your card slots are gonna look like when they're finished. So if you want to top stitch your card slots, go ahead and just do that the machine now. I personally don't like to, but you can just pull them away and top stitch each crease one at a time. For both of these card slots, we're going to mark a line up the center, but you're stopping at this second to last fold. You're not gonna draw on the last one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this top bit away. This is your slip pocket and you do not wanna sew through that right now. So I'm gonna clip the rest together on the sides. And then I'm gonna sew up this line across one tiny stitch and then come back about a needle's width apart from the first line. This is gonna divide our card slots into two separate parts. Now those are sewn, you can just lay them flat and unclip the sides. You're gonna need your two main lining panels and you need to mark them one inch up from the bottom edge. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for both, both main lining panels. So I'll just cover it once. What we need to do is line up the bottom edge of this card slots piece with the one inch mark that you made. Make sure it's sitting equal distance from the top as well and that everything's nice and straight and just clip it at the top. Now lift up the front of the pockets and you've got this folded section here. I'll just clip that as well. And we're just gonna sew that in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so you can lay these back down flat and just clip the whole thing together. What we now need to do is sew the bottom and the sides. When you're sewing the sides, you wanna do them both in the same direction again to prevent stretching. So top to bottom for both sides. Now the card slots are sewn on, you can see how you've got six card slots and a slip pocket on each side. What we're gonna do next is attach these side accents. So you're gonna put these 
right sides together on each edge and clip them together. So we're going to sew each side with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So if you get a bit of stretching here, don't worry too much. This is all going to get trimmed soon anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press those side accents away. So take that over to the iron, give it a good press like that. And then we're going to top stitch through the side accent. And all of these steps you're doing with both of your main panels. You may need to change to a slightly larger needle at this point, maybe a size 80 or 90. But if you follow the interfacing in the pattern, it shouldn't be too bulky. So grab your pattern piece A. Now it has a line on it that says to, it's to be ignored until instructed in the pattern. This is where you need it. So you're going to fold it on that line like that. And what you're going to do is clip this centered to the bottom edge of your panel. And we're going to trace around this and cut the panel to match. So you're going to do this for both of your main lining panels. Just make sure it's centered, make sure it's lined up with the bottom edge and go ahead and trim those to match. Once those are trimmed, we just need to fit the wings. So for each of these panels, you need to mark them one inch up from the bottom edge. Then you want to place a wing on the one inch mark. It needs to be wider at the top, shorter at the bottom and just clip that in place. And you want to place a, another wing on the other side, again on the one inch mark, making sure it's wider at the top. Repeat with your second lining panel, and then we're going to baste all of these in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we need to put these two lining panels right side together and clip them together on that bottom edge. And sew that bottom edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So press that seam open on the bottom. So I'm just going to use my iron to do that. And then we're going to top stitch both sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's step six finished. Let's move on to the final step. Step seven is final assembly. For this step, you're gonna need your exterior pieces, your lining and the remaining overlay. So the first thing you're gonna do is find the edge that has the raw edges, place that right side up. So the raw edge is facing up and you need to line it up perfectly with the center of this seam on the lining. So you'll notice that your overlay is a little bit longer. So first of all, I would just trim that to match. Okay, and you need to make sure that the center of this overlay is matching the center of the seam on the lining. And clip that together. And then we're just going to baste that into place. So before we go any further, just double check that this is wrong side up. This needs to be the side with the raw edge. Otherwise, you're going to be very frustrated later on. So what we're going to do next is attach the exterior to this. So we're going to put them right sides together. I like to have the side with the flap against the zip side. That means that this zip pocket will be in the back of the bag. But you can do it either way you like. So you want to tuck the flap in, make sure that your wings are tucked in, everything's tucked in nice and neat. And you're going to match it up to the lining and clip it in place. Now we'll clip the other side of the exterior in. So we're going to do the same thing. It should line up with the lining and it should butt up perfectly against the other exterior piece. So you don't want a gap here and you don't want them like overlaying each other. You just want them touching each other. So clip that in place. Now we're going to sew around the entire thing. So I'm going to change to my zipper foot, which is going to make it easier because my presser foot then can um, butt up against the edge of the stabilizer and I can use it as a guide. 
This just helps you get a really close stitch to the stabiliser, which gives the bag a much nicer finish. So if you have a zip foot available, that's a great method to use. We're going to sew around this whole thing. This is a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you're not thro sewing through the stabiliser, you're sewing right next to it. If any of your curves aren't quite right, just go back and do them again. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. So now I'm going to use my pinking shears on the curves just to like reduce the bulk, but also help the curve to sit neater. So if you don't have pinking shears, you can just cut little V's into the curves. Don't get too close to your stitches, but it will help the fabric labor to when the curve turns out. Okay, so now we're ready to turn the bag out. And that's why we left the bottom open like this. So you're just going to pull the whole thing through the base like this. Okay, so if you've got a turning tool, now's a good time just to push all of those seams out, especially on the curves. You want to get those curves sitting nice and neat. Okay, and I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to just give it a really good press and just press everything down. But what we need to do first is move this base overlay to the right side. So this needs to be on the exterior side. Like so. Okay, so then I'm going to give everything a really good press because by pressing it, we're going to get a nice, neat finish. It's also going to be easier to top stitch everything. Okay, so I do recommend um, using like a pressing cloth with your iron just in case your iron marks your fabric because sometimes that happens to us. So, what we're going to do because we want to sew this closed, we're first of all just going to use like a little bit of adhesive. So, you could use um, double sided tape. But I'm going to use a bit of Fabri-Tac glue. Um, first of all, I'm just going to put a bit underneath these exterior parts. So kind of on that lining seam, just on the centre. Now just be careful with fabric glue because sometimes if you use too much, it can show through the lining fabric. I'm just going to use a little bit there. That should hold those exterior seams in place. And then I'm going to use a tiny bit along the seam here to hold my overlay in place. So you're not going to need much because it's going to want to stay in place anyway. We're just making sure it doesn't move when we sew it. Now I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both long edges. If you haven't already, I definitely recommend changing to a larger needle at this point. When you're sewing this overlay on, your stitching will be showing on the lining, so just bear in mind what colour thread you're using. Okay, so if you kind of skipped the interfacing advice, this is where you're going to notice it because it's going to get really bulky here. If you're in any doubt about these edges, you can just hand crank it, and that way you'll know whether your machine can make it through without breaking a needle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold these wings in so you want them to be folded in so that you can't really see them from the outside. And then just clip them in place. So the wing should be completely flush with the edge. And do that for all four. And we're going to top stitch the whole bag, so if you feel that you need to put some clips to hold everything in place up here. Go ahead. Just want to make sure that seam is rolled out so the lining shouldn't really be showing on the exterior and the exterior shouldn't be showing on the lining. Okay, we're going to top stitch the whole thing with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, so we've got one last bit of sewing. You're going to bring your bag exterior sides together and you want your wings to come together like this. So you just match them up, exterior sides together and clip together. And we're going to sew these diagonal edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well at the top and bottom because this can be under a lot of strain. Okay, so now you've just got to turn it out and have a look at your finished bag. And you may need to give it another press, particularly where you've got the stabilizer fused to it. So what you can do is just put like a few cloths inside to pack it out and then you can run the iron across it to help it just fuse the stabilizer back in place, get rid of any crinkles. And there you have it. You may need to just kind of tweak it at the bottom there, just to help it find its place. And there you go.